Okay, it's a video, uh, music. Hello, I'm David Gauntlet uh, from the University of Westminster in London, in England. Uh, this is a video for the Media Education Summit Conference taking place in Boston in November 2015. Uh, they asked me if I could come to the conference. I said, unfortunately, it didn't fit into my schedule. Uh, I was never able to go, but what I did say was that I could do a video. So this is the video. Um, Every video needs a gimmick, so in this case, uh, it's this. Hello, I am a computer, a Windows computer. I will be asking the questions. I've got a computer asking me questions, because I need some prompts for speaking, otherwise I'm just sitting uh, <laughs> talking. Um, so it was, uh, I needed some prompts. This is the prompts. It's, uh, it's an annoying computer voice. There was a TV show in the 1990s where celebrities answered questions asked by a computer. I don't know why that ever seemed like a good idea. It's a bit like that. But worse. <laughs> uh, so, I was asked along for a particular reason. I was asked to participate for a particular reason, uh, which is this. So you have written a new book. Why have you done another book? Why have you done another book? Um... So yeah, Julian McDougal kindly asked if I could talk perhaps about uh, my book Making Media Studies, uh, which came out this year and for a Media Education Summit Conference, you'd have thought that might be relevant. So um, I'm happy to do that. So why have I done another book? Well, I'd done Making is Connecting in 2011, and then um, I wanted to do something which uh, made an argument about the field of media studies and how it was moving forward. The subtitle is uh, the creativity turn in media and communication studies. That's a turn which may have not happened yet, but uh, which the book is trying to say has happened and therefore make it happen. Um, it begins with my Media Studies 2.0 article from 2007, and then it's a number of other things that build on that. So this is just old things, huh? Let's have that again. So this is just old things. Huh. No, it's not just old things. Um, it is that old thing. But then, uh, increasingly as I went through it, it was pulling together some old articles that I'd done um, from in the past five or six years. But any of the older ones, I was dissatisfied with them and they seemed a bit old. So I replaced them with newer things. So now it's a, it's a collection of articles about creativity, making, Media studies. Some of them are a bit older and some of them are brand new. So why is it called Making Media Studies? Why is it called Making Media Studies? It's called Making Media Studies because it's about making media and thinking about the meaning of making media. Media is the plural word of medium, so it's mediums. It's thinking about people making things using different media. So it's making media studies, and also it's making media studies, remaking media studies, thinking about the role of media studies, what media studies can do, and what it should be concerned with. Is there a thing about Twin Peaks? Is there a thing about Twin Peaks? Uh, you've slightly misunderstood my computer friend, but uh, the point is that in media studies you have those old concerns with representation, industries, and audiences, and we're still concerned with these things, but we used to be able to treat them separately, and now they're all together, and they're, they're the old topics, so they sort of become part of the foundations. And then you've got two peaks of interesting things happening in media studies simultaneously, and they don't fit together very well. So one is the interest in creativity and making, people making things. Uh, the other one, is about surveillance and digital exploitation, the exploitation of our labor and our data by big media companies who exist to make money from it. 
those two perspectives don't fit together very well, but we need to find a way in which they can work together, I think, because it's pointless, these people going, oh, you're just sort of stupid optimists who don't realise what's wrong with the world, and these people not really being able to talk to these people because they just find them too miserable to be able to talk to. Um, the interesting stuff happening in both spheres, we need to be able to unite them more. So it's partly about trying to do that. Um, because it's me and my interest in the, the potential of media and wanting to think about what good things we can do with it. We need to be worried about the things that the critical people worry about, yes. But also we need to think about, you know, we do have these media technologies. They are useful and powerful for people. Uh, so we need to think about what good things we can do with them, not just complain about the downsides. So, um, so as you know, the book tends to tends to have some of that in it. Um, what's that Tim Ingold bit? It's on page three. Come on. What's that Tim Ingold bit? It's on page three. Okay. Uh, you know Tim Ingold? He wrote a book called Making that's very good. He's a sort of anthropologist, a very uh, wide-thinking anthropologist. Um, this is telling me to look at page three. So um, here I'm talking about how it's kind of media studies which has making front and centre. This is explaining why we've got a book called Making Media Studies. It's about being able to do things with media. And so I refer to uh, three key distinctions which are basically borrowed from Tim Ingold. And I've changed a couple of the words because he's not talking about media, he's talking about something else. But basically it goes like this. So it's about um, learning with media rather than learning about media. So it's about learning with media rather than learning about media. Uh, that's because we intend to move forward through building meanings and understandings rather than looking back over accounts of how things are. So it's about moving forward, making new things, rather than looking backward. And that's because our aims are primarily transformational rather than documentary. So because we want to make and move forward and transform rather than just describe and look backward and complain, that's what we're doing. So, computer? So you think media studies has all changed? It's all about creativity? No. Um, well, it's not, is it? But um, I think media studies can be refreshed by embracing the creative and making side of what we can nowadays easily do with media. Uh, I also think that the, the old political and uh, con the concerns about capitalism, the economic concerns, they're all very relevant as well. As I said, we need to find a way to fit them together. So it's not just all about creativity. I like the thing in the box on page seven. I like Brian Eno. <laughs> it's nice to hear the computer likes Brian Eno. So the thing in the box on page seven, that's a bit where uh, I'm not going to talk you through the whole book page by page, uh, honest. Um, this is just a few key bits from the start. So this is media as triggers for experiences and making things happen. And I'll tell you what it says in the box. What it says in the box is, and this is inspired by a Brian Eno point. He's making the point about art as triggers for experiences. So I was thinking about that and we got this. So it says, I'll put it in a box to show that it's, it's an important bit. Uh, it says, we should look at media not as channels for communicating messages, and not as things. So media not as channels and not as things. We should look at media as triggers for experiences and for making things happen. They can be places of conversation, exchange and transformation. So media as places of conversation explains itself I think. Uh, media as places of exchange uh, there I'm basically referring to what people otherwise also talk about as sharing um, but the word share has become nauseating because of the way uh, Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook says it all the time about anything where he means putting stuff on Facebook, <laughs> which is, uh, is not what I understand by the human act of sharing a thing with a person, putting a thing on Facebook, not the same as that. I'm saying exchange because I think in terms of exchange of gifts, I give you something, you're know, pleased and you like it, and you give me something, and I'm pleased and I like that. I think exchange actually works quite well and share is misused and, and, and now spoiled. So I'm saying exchange. And transformation, making our lives better. We do still want that. 
don't we? We always did. Um, so then it says, so that was media as places of conversation, exchange and transformation. Media in the world means a fantastically messy set of networks filled with millions of sparks, some igniting new meanings, ideas and passions, and some just fading away. Not everything that happens online is important. There are different levels of significance and impact with all of these things all happening all over the place. Uh, so I want to say that again, but the media in the world means a fantastically messy set of networks. Fantastically messy set of networks filled with millions of sparks. <laughs> Lots of stuff. Some igniting new meanings, ideas and passions, and some just fading away. So I boiled all of that down, in fact, to a bit on the back cover, <laughs> which says, uh, where's that? We should think about media in terms of conversations, inspirations, and making things happen. I think we can actually boil it down to that. So it's about conversations, people connecting, and having what is essentially a conversation, but it might be mediated in all kinds of different ways, so it might not look like a conversation as you might picture it, but it's a conversation. Uh, inspiration, I think really important, people being able to inspire others, and then others do something that then inspires other people. So it's a kind of flashy network, things happening, network of inspiration, and making things happen. So thinking about media, as ways of causing things to happen in the world. So much more powerful, I think, than the standard media studies model of media as a thing that you look at. So if you think like this, media very broadly, media as being lots of things that we can communicate messages and exchange ideas with, uh, media as triggers for experiences, it does lead to a different way of, of thinking about things. It moves you away from that producers and audiences approach or the approach where industry is the thing that makes media and exists somewhere else. That still describes some big industries, of course, but we can't always be talking like that. There was a thing uh, I saw on Twitter the other day, which somebody drew to my attention on Twitter, where they were tweeting about a study which had found that uh, when you ask young people what jobs they want to do these days, the job they most want to do is to be a YouTube star. And... I, I hope they realise that this is not a job that you apply for <laughs> as such. Um, I think they do realise that. So basically, I, I think that's okay, you know, that's good, because there are people who want to be creative. It's partly got that weird fame thing to it, people who want to be famous. But, um, but I think it shows that they want to be creative instigators of their own ideas, people who conceive of and produce media stuff and they want to be successful at that and that's really good um on twitter then this was a hash had a hashtag audiences producer and i found that very confusing this was from a media studies teacher um i think well it's not audiences producer is it it's it's producer as producer it's it's producers it's people making media what we have nowadays is people who make media in the past well then there were people who made media and they were a small elite bunch and these days people who make media is all of us so we're not audience anymore i hate that thing where people who are not media professionals get called audience as if that explains them that's just weird um so it's not audience as producer it's it's people producing and um, and that's what we do and that's interesting uh it's a really good thing for media studies to get its teeth into but not in the old mode just by like describing what happens but by coming up with new ways in which we can do it do it more interestingly do it in ways which challenge the status quo and therefore contribute the creative side of media studies can contribute to the critical side by helping us to do more interesting things and not having to put up with uh that exploitation and coming up with interesting ways to challenge that surveillance that's what would be good isn't that um it's not my job to read the book. You talk about it. Stop wasting time. <laughs> okay, that was just that's just a hassling comment. Uh, let's have that bit again. Stop wasting time. You could have a thing that like played that to you every fifteen minutes, couldn't you, in your office though? <laughs> that's a bad idea. Okay. Um so next along on the questions, we've got this. There's the thing about platforms for creativity and eight principles for platforms for creativity. First of all, what do you mean platforms for creativity? Okay, platforms for creativity. 
uh, is what I talk about, where a platform can be anything big or small, uh, near or far away, which uh, enables people to be creative, gives people a platform upon which they can build and develop their own creativity. So a platform for creativity could be a library or a national library system, say, or a network of museums, uh, or it could be a network of computers like the internet, it could be YouTube, um, it could be Lego. It's anything which kind of invites people in to take part in creative activity and it's sort of self-explanatory. Um, one slightly strange example perhaps, that, but a perfect example, is the Global Cardboard Challenge where every year, uh, for the past few years, will then get people invited to make anything they want to out of cardboard and share it online. Um, it's a very inspiring thing where kids in particular, but anybody, uh, can take part and just build amazing imaginative things out of cardboard. As an idea, that's almost nothing, isn't it? Like, make something out of cardboard. Hardly an idea at all. Um, and you could make something out of cardboard at any point if you wanted to. So how is this even a thing? You know, uh, But it is a thing because it offers an invitation to lots of people to take part in a thing, to come together, if, even if only virtually, but also physically as well, to do their cardboard making. Um, so it's this invitation onto a platform and then the idea can be incredibly simple but people are invited in to take part and then the thing makes sense to take part in because people have been invited into it. So the platform often includes that kind of invitation to do something together. So this can refer to digital platforms or physical events or some clever combination of the two is, is interesting. Um, and it can use any kind of media or just people doing stuff together. But I think it's maybe a powerful idea because it takes us away from thinking just about digital platforms or you know online activity or just online activity or events. It, it brings all of these things together and describes the purpose of those things we're interested in, where they are platforms for creativity, things that give people a platform upon which to build and develop their creativity, to have conversations, inspirations, and to make things happen, basically. Um, and these eight principles and the eight principles. Um, the eight principles are... Uh, so I came up with these eight principles, which are eight principles for designing creative platforms, basically, uh, about three years ago, and I put them online and they've been picked up by some other people, which is nice, and then I've developed them more here. Um, so I'll just tell you what they are, because uh, they, they turn out to be quite useful, I think. They were based on my experience of working with different organizations to create digital platforms, in fact, for people to come together and do creative things, it turns out that they apply in different contexts too. Um, other people have applied them to uh, knitting groups and 3D printing and lots of different kinds of creative activity. So that's been nice. And the points are, number one, embrace because we want to, in other words, People just want to do stuff already. You don't have to set up something and try to cajole them into doing it. People already want to make and share and exchange and have inspiration and conversations and ideas and all of that. Embrace the fact and go with the grain of what they want to do already. Set no limits on participation. So uh, this was based on uh, having seen some digital platforms in particular which try to sort of set up a story that you need to unlock so the user has to kind of fit in with somebody else's story and work out what it is. Nah, that's no good. Uh, what you want is uh, people having the chance to tell their own stories. Not try to discover some story set up by a corporation, but uh, to tell their own. Celebrate participants and not the platform. Some platforms are a bit too pleased with themselves. What you want is a platform that celebrates what people do on that platform, not the platform itself. Support storytelling, as already mentioned. Give people a chance to share their stories. Uh, some gifts, some theatre and some recognition, so people should have the chance to be able to give things away to others because that's always a nice moment. Uh, have the chance to show off because people like to do that and that's fine to be able to display their skills and talents, it's good. Uh, and also to receive recognition for what they've done, so within it there should be a chance for people to see what other people have done and then if they like it to give them praise and thanks and gratitude. 
and to say this did inspire me and in fact you've inspired me to do this thing here which you might like and then conversations inspirations and making things happen online to offline is a continuum so it's a mistake to think about just online things or just offline things but working out the ways in which they can fit together is always interesting and fruitful and uh, you know when it works well it's really good reinvent learning easier said than done but uh, using this conversation about the kind of things I'm talking about as an opportunity to rethink how we learn things and how we expect other people to learn things an opportunity not to be missed and foster genuine communities don't just talk about a bunch of people who happen to be doing a thing as a community because they're probably not a community if that's what you're doing uh, you need to work out ways in which people can be and given support to be actual meaningful communities of communication conversation etc <sighs> sorry I read out a whole list that was like a whole list um, let's go back to the funny thing where the computer says something and we have to work out what it is that it said there's a chapter about Lego why is there a chapter about Lego <laughs> uh, partly I, I just like the idea of having a chapter about Lego in a media studies book to illustrate the idea that media does not refer to television, radio, newspapers and things with screens on. Media, i.e. mediums, can be anything. So I could have had a chapter about painting or, or paint. Uh, paint and painting would have been good. As it happens, there's a chapter about Lego. Um, I was quite pleased with the chapter about Lego because it gave me a chance to talk about Lego as a tool for thinking, as well as the ways in which people use Lego and form communities. Uh, is an interesting case of uh, something not orchestrated by the company itself but people coming together and doing neat things online and offline the whole world of community around Lego is interesting in that respect there's that idea that it's a platform for creativity with low floor wide walls and high ceilings which means low floor means it's really easy to step into the world of creating with Lego it's very easy to get started at a basic level uh, High ceilings means that you can then advance to uh, you know, a, a great level. You can do really complex, big, if you want to, or intricate things that are beautiful and clever. So that means that you can easy to step in, high aspiration. But also wide walls means that it's not like you then have to build an amazing rocket or an amazing building or an amazing car. You could be building anything. Uh, you can go very wide. So it could be, you know, dragons, nature, text, anything really, you know, butterflies, uh, and any, any, insert any noun here, you know, basically anything. You can do anything with it. So white walls is that idea. So uh, that's an idea from Mitch Resnick, basically. Low floor, high ceiling, wide walls. If you've got a platform for creativity which does that, then, you know, you can do anything. And that is good. It's that open invitation to do anything, which is really powerful. Uh, and Lego, of course, also reminds us that you can make and remake things. It's not just about making a thing and it needing to be perfect and then you're happy with it and it stops. It's about how anything can be taken apart and remade into something else. Which, again, is a powerful and useful idea. You've got all these numbered lists of what you say is important. What? You've got all these numbered lists of what you say is important. I, I do quite like a numbered list. I think it's quite a readable format, okay? Uh, it says here in my notes that there's another one on page 131. So that's a list of six. Um, the list of eight was something different. This is a, this is a list of uh, things that I'm hoping we can all agree with uh, in, a, in a world where we disagree about various things about the media and uh, its role in the world and what we should be saying about it. I was trying to write down six things that we just had to agree with. Uh, so number one is the internet is ancient, by which I mean the internet has affordances which connect with uh, ancient great aspects of humanity. Uh, in other words, people's desire to make and share and have conversations. That is an ancient human desire, which we kind of went away from in the late 20th century when people thought it was a good idea to sit watching a box in the corner for four or five hours a day. 
uh, the internet reconnects us, funnily enough, with quite ancient needs. That's nice. Um, number two is a world with lots of interesting creative things is always better than a world which offers a small number of popular smartly finished things. That's the long tail argument basically. The long tail offers us a massive long tail of quirky, strange stuff which is of interest to small numbers of people but there's absolutely millions of it and there's millions of people that might be interested in those different things. So it's that diversity and I suppose I think of this when people are harking back to a, the golden age of newspapers um, which some people seem to do in the Goldsmiths Newspapers Project for one thing uh, where uh, you know, they're just upset about the hype about the internet, I suppose. So they're like, it's not the case that everybody's on Twitter, it's a particular elitish bunch of people on Twitter, which is true. Uh, but then, you know, the same applies to reading newspapers, the same applies to Guardian readers, you know, it's the, that's the same. But, uh, but, they, but they like newspapers for some reason uh, because they're made by professionals, not have ordinary people mucking in. That can't be why they like they they like the newspapers. I can't I can't even remember what they're talking about. <laughs> uh, but they seem to think that a small number of smartly finished things is better than this mess that we have. I think this mess that we have is good. It's got things in it that are not good. But having that mess is better than not having that mess. You didn't really do justice to those goldsmiths people in that bit. They are very clever. Yeah. They are cleverer than you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know what they're doing because they don't seem to have any answers. I'm trying to say at least we should have an approach which is about our capacity to make something better. Where did we get to? I think you were doing a list. Yeah, yeah. Um, six point list it was, only on number two. Number three was, uh, people doing things because they want to is always better than watch people watching things because they are there. Say that again. People doing things because they want to is always better than people watching things because they are there. So any nostalgia you have about how media was organized in the past compared to now, it's just always gonna be better. People doing and making things interacting with things, always got to be better than people just sitting watching, I think. That's just that. Um, and number four, the distribution and funding possibilities of the internet are better than the traditional models. That is true. Whatever concerns you have about the internet and social media, uh, the possibilities, the affordances of the technology for people being able to make stuff and put it out there, and uh, in the book, that's an opportunity for me to talk about Kickstarter for a few pages, um, those kind of possibilities, which we just didn't have before because the, there wasn't a technology which enabled it to happen, they're really good and powerful and enable people to do things, a much wider range of people to do things, without having to enter into the elite professional media production world, um, which is always going to be elite and difficult to get into. So that's always good. Step five, small steps into a changed world are better than no steps. Small steps into a changed world are better than no steps, obviously. And this is about the point of small steps, giving people opportunities to take small steps into creative experiences where they can sort of feel the power of making things themselves and experience sharing those things with others. Conversations, inspirations and in making things happen is always good. And step point six is the digital internet is good, but hands-on physical things are good too. A reminder to not only get excited about the world of electronic digital media, but think about ways in which we can connect them together. I've mentioned that before. I think that's what we need to be doing to move things onwards. So, uh, what's next? Why can't you decide on one list? <laughs> one ultimate list of everything. A numbered list should be three. It's the three part list. Uh, conversations, inspirations and making things happen is my three part list. I have decided on that list. 
despite having an eight point list about platforms creativity, a six point list about things we ought to be able to agree on about what's good about digital media. And uh, I think the book probably contains some other numbered lists at some point. You can't beat a numbered list. Why haven't you upgraded to Windows 10? Let's go on. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna grace that with an answer. So this is a media education summit. Is media education on the right track? Is it on the right track? That would depend uh, who was doing it and who you were doing it with, I suppose. But um, probably it's on more or less the right track. Uh, I see uh, quite a lot of things in school level media studies where it seems like they are doing a mix of interesting new things like they do get uh, young people making media a lot for example that's all that's been part of media studies for quite a long time and and still is and obviously then it, these days it's much easier to share it on youtube and all that kind of thing um but there seem to be all the old tropes still seem to still be there so you've still got audiences and institutions and representation and genres and all these kind of dreary categories, which I think there's something that can be said about these things, but if you spend whole terms talking about that, you're just wasting time when you could be doing better things. A version of media studies which is more about designing the future is what I think. I think media studies has that capacity to be about thinking about the world in which we wish to live and designing, especially in communication and media terms, but it goes broader because communication and media are just part of life now. You can't separate out. You can't separate out life from uh, you know, th those media and communication devices and equipment and, and mediums media that we use. So it's all part of the same thing, and it's about thinking about change and designing the future. That's what I think it is. Thank you very much. I am tired now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay.